Hello, everybody. We'd like to uh, welcome you to our second podcast and what we got something going on new, and we're Man, excited we're getting, about that. Getting the road started with this. We're going to stay consistent. Yes, Lord willing, we're going to do our best to uh, stay on the top of the local news. It is Christmas time. We have our Christmas cookies that has been brought to us by different people that love to feed us. That's for oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah like to do that but anyway it is christmas week it's awesome that's already here i mean hard to believe ain't it yeah, Robbie? 22 is right around the corner it's yeah. just crazy 22 is here i mean it you know seemed like just a few days ago we were talking about 2021 and then now we're already here it's, it's just crazy so anyways it is good to see everybody on podcast today we want to encourage you to share this podcast uh, it's the Flemer Road Church. You can find it at any podcast browser. What are those things called? Platforms, uh, I yeah, guess. Platforms, audio platforms. So Spotify. You can find us on uh, iTunes. Uh, iTunes. And, yeah. and I guess that's Apple Music. You know, that's yeah, sort of whatever that is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We we'll still learning there. the terminology that's on all right, this stuff. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I kept Robbie around where he can help me on this terminology and stuff. But anyway, no, we're having a blast oh, doing yeah. this. Okay, so a couple of things that. We do want to talk about, man, it's a lot of stuff going on in the world this week. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely crazy, and a lot of it is considering the church. I mean, it's one of those things where we really have to consider that there's a lot going on that is huge for the kingdom of God. And so I know I've got a few things that, that I want to share. Robbie's got a few things that he wants to share, and we're going to kind of talk about these things because some of them are pretty serious. I That's mean, right. You know, we got some things going on at the school, so oh, yeah. we're going to yeah, talk yeah. about it as well. But we hope, we thank you for joining us, number one. Thank you for doing that. And so we're going to jump right in this. And as we kind of, I want to just set a precedent, I guess, and the best we can is that this is stuff that we believe that Christians need to be in the know about and how we can stand. And also, you know, we're not turning into a politic debate around different things. This is around... This is God's word, this is God's people, and this is important. Amen, so. amen. Yeah, that, especially around Christmas time, you know, we tend to get so busy, uh, we, we have to remember that we, you know, we have to stay up to date in our walks with God, and even with, you know, hearing the news and all the stories, so, especially with the new year coming around, we, we don't know what the future holds, and no, so, my goodness, we yeah. have to stay up to date with a bunch of things. So. Yeah, the future, wow, that's a, that's a big <laughs> word right there, so, okay, uh, we're going to go ahead and get started in it and just kind of go from some things. Go ahead, Brother Robert. Yeah, so, what, what, what brought to your attention this so week? So I, I mentioned this in, in our in our first episode about the University of Iowa. And this, this kind of resonates, this story kind of resonates with me being a college student and everything like that. But uh, so the, the author, I'm just going to go ahead and say his name, uh, is, is, it goes by the name of Michael Faust, and uh, he has he makes a lot of good points yes. um, throughout his work. But I think the, the main point here... Um, just to sum it up in, in, in easy one, two, three, is uh, there's these, there were these groups on campus uh, at the University of Iowa, and they were basically kicked off because they would not uh, allow uh, certain people to be part of their leadership team because they were uh, the Bible. They were traditional in their views. They, they, you know, which which I agree they should have been right. You know, yeah, that's, that's yeah, always exactly. so important as a Christian that. We go by what the Word of God says, you know, and not you know. Society may try to warp uh, our our vision or you know whatever it is, and say, well, that's not right. Do it this way, but we've got to go by the Word of God. And so, even though you know, reading the story, it, it can be seen as kind of harsh, um, but at the same time, you've got to think of it from that perspective too. And so, uh, basically, they got persecuted for that, and 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 the University of Iowa lost multiple rounds in court. Uh, based on the the universal law that you can't discriminate against groups wow. you know, and their beliefs and what they believe, you know. So, uh, this praise God for that that you know they didn't get canceled or anything like that. You know, and it's good news to the university. And the thing about bringing them back on after all this lawsuit, after all the lawsuits are handled, uh, I I don't know if there's any more big lawsuits handled, but there's a two million dollar one going on right now. So, we definitely need to be in prayer for. University of Iowa, and and for them to be more accepting of that, and uh, W, you speak a little bit more about yeah. prayer in and through the situation. Yeah, you know, I think about, you know, me and Robbie have talked a little bit too about 
how can we reach people on these universities, you know, because I say universities, colleges, tech schools, you know, the whole nine yards when I'm talking about colleges, universities. But as you think about universities have a lot of different guidelines that yeah. they have to do and have to follow. And that's all well and good. But when it comes to the Christian policies, you know, we need the same amount of, I, I say the word grace, but we need the same amount of leniency, whatever the word is there, to basically say, okay, if the Muslims can do it, then the Christians should be able to do it as well. You know, and I think that is something that Christians need to stand up and say, hey, you know, even though we do have to go through some guidelines and those are understandable, we don't want to back down from those guidelines. Does that kind of make yes, sense? Yes. Or, I mean, yeah, what, you, what do you think you about gotta it? Have, you got to have, you got to respect, of course, because, you know, it's just, you know. It's a tough position. Right, 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 yeah. right, right. But I think the most important thing here is sticking by the Word of God and, and you know, obviously you have to respect and all that, and we get that, and all, you know, uh, but that should not stop God's Word from going forth. You know, in other ways and, and, and all of that. So throughout. Yeah, exactly. I think there's a point in time, you know, like even in our government, and let's talk about that for a second. You know, there's a point in time in our government when we have to say, let God be true and every man a liar. You know, there's a point in our life where, you know, if, if this comes, if you want me to do something that takes out re my religious beliefs, mm -hmm. then we have an issue. You know, yes, and I, I yes. think that's. I think that's fair enough to be said if we've done it and do it in the right attitude in the right way. Yes. Yeah. You know, um, there has to be a way where we say as Christians in America, we are not going to be belittled anymore, but we're going to continue to stand up. Because honestly and truly, you know, we were, I don't know, you've been to D.C. before? Uh, I've never been to been D.C. D.C., okay. No. Um, anybody that's been to D.C., you need to go one time. I mean, it's pretty profound and pretty amazing. But there's a Holocaust Museum there in D.C. And it's, I think it's like a three-story Holocaust. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like one of the biggest museums for the Holocaust in the world. And basically, you walk through these sections and see how the Jews were treated down through time and during the Holocaust. But they take you into this very last room, and it's a statement. And I, I don't know the statement exact word for word, and I don't remember who said it. But everybody will probably recognize something in it. But it says they came for a certain group of people and we didn't do anything. You know, we just stood right, back. Right. And then they came for so and so and we just stood back. Right. And then they came for this and we just stood back. But one day they came for us right. and nobody was there to stand for us. And I think that's where America is. And I think that we're just saying, well, you know, we're just going to give a little bit. Mm -hmm. And we'll slip up just a little bit because make everybody feel better. But in reality, we're giving up something every time we go. And then all of a sudden, we look around and we're like, oh my goodness. <laughs> we, we're not even in a Christian nation anymore. You know? And then you even apply that to uh, the campuses. And, yes, you know, yes. The and officials that's where I was, are like, yes. Yeah, yeah, the officials are like, well, we'll give you all this privilege, you know. But if you cross the line and you don't have, you know... Is too far is too far, so it can go both ways in that correct, instance as well. Correct, correct, so. most definitely, yeah, most definitely. If they give you what you want, definitely be, be, I guess not generous would not be the word, not but as lenient. Yeah, guess, yeah, so. be yeah. be uh, be diligent of what they have said. You know, I mean, and we can go into some other things on on mm -hmm. campus, but there are protocols, permits. I mean, stuff yeah. that you've got to get to be legal and, and if you're doing those things then you should be able to do what you feel like is if it's not hurting anybody right. else you know I think that is something and, you know if, if Robbie wanted to tell me today hey pastor I think the grass out there is my God you know I mean we live in a world that is religious freedoms I mean you have the right to believe yeah. that grass is your God I mean I could say well I disagree with you on that I mean of course I would and you would say the same thing if I said that to you. Mm -hmm. But you say, I disagree, but you have the right to do that. And that does not hurt anybody. But when your religion does hurt somebody, that's where it crosses the line in religious freedoms, in that's my right. opinion. You know? right. But anyways, okay, so that was, that's, that's a great story about University of Iowa. Wow. that's yeah, I, just, And I want to yeah. ask this, too. If you would help us, have, have you heard of anything about the University of Iowa that, that we have just shared? I mean, that right. that's stuff that you don't hear even on Fox News. I mean, that's right. you know, and... That's something that 
we're really trying to diligently search out some things that are pretty uh, something that maybe we haven't heard out in in I guess you could say mainline news. I yeah, guess one of our be. goals of this group is to kind of build a community. So we'd love to, you know, here you know try to you know, limit politics and and uh, go to the religious side of things. But um, yeah, that's our know, goal. We want we yeah. want you to we want to hear your opinion and and get your feedback and everything and. You know, who knows, maybe we'll answer and have a good conversation about it. So you know, Yeah, so. exactly, exactly. So one thing that I saw, and we're going to kind of get into some other articles like, like uh, Brother uh, Robbie brought out, but one thing I saw was missionaries made a daring nighttime escape from a Haitian gang, and they said God prepared a way. And I thought that was pretty profound. Um, uh, the writer of the article that we were reading is the same one that, that uh, um, uh, Robbie was reading was uh, Michael... Is it first? Faust. Faust. Yeah, is, that's yes. probably right. I'm a, Robbie's going to have to help me with a lot of words in this thing. It's going to be <laughs> he awesome. He can't speak way. Well, yeah, that's right. I don't know what know, I'm doing, know. man. It's crazy. But anyways, I know what I'm supposed to say. It just don't come out. But anyways, but 12 um, Christian missionaries uh, were kidnapped who have found freedom from their Haitian um, kidnappers last week. Did so in the middle of the night escape in a multi-mile journey through woods in the nighttime, and uh, their agency was talking about it this Monday. And the Christian Aid Mission, Christian Aid Ministries last week announced that 12 remaining hostages were free, but chose not to provide details on how the group of one dozen men, women, and children had made it to safety. There was a gang known as the 400 Mawazin, that, that is pretty crazy, yeah. kidnapped the missionaries on October the 16th, Five of them had already previously been released, but the rest were still in, in being kidnapped. And so during a press conference, the missionaries escaped. They said God worked in a miraculous way to allow the hostages to escape. This was the general director of the mission group. And he said that the group worked, walked as many as 10 miles, traveling through thorns. And the group included a married couple, a 10-month-old baby, a three-year-old child, a 14-year-old girl, and a 15-year-old boy, four single men and two single women. So that's mostly younger people. That's crazy, you know that. yeah. You yeah. know, uh, one of the men felt, this is pretty amazing, one of the men fell and felt a strong leading that God was calling them to leave. And he said, after sharing this, his, this leading with the rest of the group, they united that, yes, God was calling them to leave. And so the group testified that this unity that they arrived at, that this unity that they arrived at was one of the greatest miracles they experienced. Before that, they had it was hard for them to come together, but God brought them together in unity on this matter. And so they escaped. They said they put their shoes on, packed water in their clothes, and prepared for the journey. That's pretty amazing. That's awesome. You know, yeah. They, they and were it, in such a sucky situation, I guess, you, you know, for yeah, lack of a better yeah, word. Yeah, yeah. You know, where I can imagine it's hard to see God a lot of, you know, if I, if I was out there, I probably wouldn't, you know, I probably have trouble finding God too in that, you know, it's like, how am I going to get out of this, you know, or what, I, I don't even know what I'd be thinking in that situation, you know, I'd be scared for my life, but, <laughs> yeah, exactly. you know, that's, that's the beautiful But God thing. gives you the power to do yeah, that, you know. For sure. Um, and the, the, the general director said this, it was, he, it felt like God prepared a path for them, and after the number of hours of walking, they began to dawn. And they eventually found someone that helped them. And person that they found began to get a flight for them on from the Coast Guard to Florida. So I mean that's wow. pretty amazing that they that they did <coughs> excuse me. They did that. I mean that's that's pretty profound. Yes, yes. You know, we think about going to church, but man, I mean, can you imagine being kidnapped for being a Christian? I mean, I just can't even imagine that. But these people were kidnapped for being a Christian and held hostage. And they say, we're breaking out of here and getting out of this, you know. And so. seeing, you know, we live in America, most of us don't ever hear about any of, the, of these things. You know, we, we think everybody everybody has heard the Bible at least once, you know. And it's yes. just, just so hard, you know, kind of think of parts of the world where they've never, they don't even allow it. And so, you know, the hope, you know, speaking on uh, younger families and, you know, stuff like that, you know, come, bringing it back to America with, with marriage and stuff, uh, you know, we even see, uh, you know, God failing in, in America as far, as far as marriage is concerned. Um, this article uh, title is, it's a, it says something along the lines of over, it's, a, it's well over half 
of Americans say that they believe that marriage is better for the future, right? And so uh, it's going to is going to carry the future on uh, for a better good. Mm. And so if that makes sense. You yeah, know, yeah. If we read in the Bible, it says marriage is marriage is a godly institution. You can see that in That's Ephesians right. five. You know where. You know, God defines the roles of a, of a wife and a husband, and that's right. I'm sure Pastor Aaron can speak on some of that, and you know, and uh, it's about uh, investing into your children and all that. There's a lot of people, you know, their motives have changed, and you know, as a society gets farther away from God, marriage goes with that also. You know, it's, it's it's heavily a godly thing and a godly commitment. Yeah, so. most definitely, I think so, and. And as we all understand that marriage is being affected big time by the philosophies of the world, yes. you know, and, and marriage is getting hit hard by those things. Now, I guess this is something, hey, this is a podcast, so I know many of y'all are probably just listening to us going down the road. Right. Some of y'all are watching us on Facebook or YouTube, but uh, we're sorry for those that are watching us because <laughs> we're probably pretty boring. But That's right. Anyways, I've got a rubber band that I'm playing with, so... As, as uh, I think about marriage, you know, the fight of on marriage from the world is so real because yeah. marriage, you know, is supposed to be honorable, supposed to be undefiled, and also it's supposed to be between one man and one woman, you know. And when you begin to think about that, that's a huge issue going on in the world today, you know. And I I know that's something. This is where the road meets the road, you know. Marriage is huge, and when you start messing with God's plan, then it starts having some consequences of it. And we've definitely started seeing those. And I think something about marriage to the country is huge. And I'll explain it like this. Is that that is uh, the church is only as strong as the families that make it up. Amen. You know, if you don't have strong families, you don't have a strong church. And we understand that to have strong families, you got to have a strong relationship with God. I mean, that yeah. is huge, a strong relationship with God, not just as a couple, but individually, you know, and that's huge. But then also, the country is only good as the co the churches that make it up. Mm -hmm. Remember the, the one of the queens that came over, and they were asking, I think it was not a queen, but it was somebody in power, said, go find what makes America great. And he looked in the White House and said, it's not there. He looked in the, the Senate and it's not there. He looked at the, you know, the, the halls of Congress and all those stuff and said, I, I'm not seeing it. But when he walked into the church, he said, there's where the greatness of America lies. Yeah. And yeah. that's exactly what it is, is that God in our church has, has made our country great. That's right. And when we forsake that, we forsaken the greatness of That's our country. Right. That kind of goes back to uh, what Pastor and I discussed later on today about it goes all the way back to uh, the nuclear family backbone. You know, yes, it's yes. often a you know more of a political argument, but we can apply it to religion. You know, it's, it's like Pastor said, it's it's strong godly families, husbands the leader and, and the wife submit and the. Uh, uh, husband loves the wife as much as he does the church. Yeah, and I think that's huge. You it's know. so very important that we, we understand those roles because I think they're not as static anymore. Yeah, they're exactly. Just, you know, especially in our generation. Right, I mean, right. Especially our generation. The younger generation. Yeah, right. you know, if husbands loved their wives as Christ loved the church, right, it would be right. an amazing marriage, you know. Amen. And as, as, the, as the wife is falling after God too, you know, that's Amen. the key. It's falling after God. It really is. Uh, anything else you want to say about that, Brother Robbie? Oh well, that's that's. Okay. I just, just wanted to bring that up because it's it's it's, it's a huge issue. It's a struggle in mm. younger generations. And Most definitely. It's not as valuable anymore. So. There's something that I saw that I thought was pretty amazing. This is going back to world news, and then I've got a couple of things I want to say, and then we're done. But, um, the world news is pretty amazing because a couple of weeks ago and this is something this is a little older news probably and I don't know if anybody's heard of this or not but a couple of weeks ago the UN passed a resolution that they wanted the official name the Temple Mount only to be called by its Muslim name mm -hmm. um, now and here's what here's what's amazing to me is that 
there were only a few countries that stood with Israel on this this uh, this right. this item. Um, the Temple Mount, of course, as you know, is the site of the first temple that was built by Solomon and destroyed by the Babylonians, and the second temple that was destroyed by the Romans. It was the second temple that Jesus visited, and the western wall where the Jews pray is part of the Temple Mount structure. Now, the Temple Mount is also considered holy within Islam, and the resolution says this, any actions taken by Israel to try to get power to impose its laws, jurisdiction, and administration on the holy city of Jerusalem are illegal. Now, we can argue, number one is, does the UN really have power to do this anyways? But number two is, is that significantly the resolution does not contain the phrase Temple Mount, but instead refers to it in the Muslim term for the site. Now, um, uh, the resolution calls for upholding unchanged the historical status quota at this Temple Mount, but they call it by the by the Muslim term, although that term has, has itself was seen by Israel as changing the dynamics. Now, one thing I do wanted to mention about this is that the Israelites ambassador to the United Nations, Gilead Erdon, said this, by referring to the holiest site in Judaism, the Temple Mount, only by the Muslim name, the resolution itself is changing the status quota. And and what he's saying is the hypocrisy of these resolutions is truly outrageous. And he criticized um, uh, the things that happened. But here's interesting. Now, I don't know much about the UN, and I'm trying to study about it. I, I know I want to try to do some more studying about those, the United Nations. And I know everybody on here is going to have different ideologies and philosophies about this. But this resolution passed 129 to 11. 129 mm. to 11. Now, here is, here is the, the crazy thing is that the countries that opposed it were Israel, <laughs> you know, and that course, pretty, yeah. Yeah. the United States, which is amazing, which is great, Canada, and Australia. Mm -hmm. Those were some of the nations that opposed it. But you're thinking out of these 100 and give or take 140 nations, mm -hmm. 129 of them wanted to make it where it is mentioned by its Muslim name. Wow. And, and, and what I think that is important in, in the Bible history is this, is that we understand that in the end times that people are going to go against the nation of Israel. And I think that is what is happening during this time, is that these things are beginning to take place, that God's timeline is is working and God's timeline is is going forward and his return is soon. I mean that that's you know we we say that a lot but we understand that he could come back any time and it could be 10 years from now. We don't know, but we do know that it's coming very quickly. So yeah, that's I right. think that's that's pretty cool and I definitely wanted to shine some light on that. Also, I wanted to uh, just bring that up some things that we'll go into more detail some when we have more time. But I, I thought that was pretty interesting. You know, I was reading a couple weeks ago about the temple and stuff, and they said the Jews are getting everything ready for the temple. Mm -hmm. um, and they're, they're getting their instruments. They're getting their, their priestly attires. They're getting all that stuff ready because of that one day that it's going to happen, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just amazing how God moves. His hand moves the news his hand moves the the world pretty so much. so it's like the book you know we us southerners at least we say it's predicted in the bible you know that the world is, yeah the world is not gonna you know there's some people that believe oh it'll, it'll get better i i, I don't see that you know yeah, the bible doesn't say that work, yeah right? exactly exactly you know, yeah and, so, and if uh, you're looking at the world it's not getting better yeah, I mean, it's, for sure yeah so, yeah so i want to end it like this robbie today i know uh we're going, it's Christmas week. I mean, it's Christmas, mm -hmm. and I I know uh, I'm going to give Robbie an opportunity to maybe say what Christmas means to him and, and all that good stuff, but I know as Americans, we are truly blessed. I mm -hmm. mean, mm -hmm. I, I want to take this time, too, to say this, is that us, and I, I really don't know, I haven't really talked to Robbie about this, but I, and he can say what he would like to. That's what I, this is not something to where... 
Robbie's going to have different I- ideas about stuff than I am, and you're yeah. going to have different ideas about stuff. So, but I will say this is that me personally on this podcast, and as far as a biblical thing, I believe to much is given, much is required, and God has given us a wonderful nation to live in. You know, and and I say God bless America. I mean, we are so blessed to be able to live here in the United States of America, and I personally don't want to see it go the direction that it's going. Right, I mean, right. I personally want America to have revival, and that's the key of it. But what Christmas means to me is, man, I, I'm just thankful God allowed us to live here in the United States of America, have what we have here, but also I'm thankful for the promise that God made of his son and that he was born in a manger and that he, you know, lived a perfect life. And and that's what Christmas is all about. And I, I definitely encourage, if you don't know Jesus Christ, your personal Lord, this Lord and Savior, today's the day you can receive that gift. And so, Brother Robbie, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, so, uh, you know, obviously Christmas should be, you know, the main reason for the season yeah. is the birth of Jesus and what what his life showed us as Christians of what we're supposed to do. But also, it helps solidify, for me at least, uh, the nativity and, and you know, every time I see the nativity in everybody's yeah, yeah. yard, you know, in South Georgia, you know, everybody's got one in their yard. And uh, it just helps solidify <laughs> the idea of family. And Christmas is, Christmas is a lot about gathering and, and fellowshipping together. And, you know, whether that be sharing gifts or, or, or uh, having a feast with one another or That's praying right. for each other. I, I'm, I'm blessed to know that uh, this, this past, uh, before I came home for Christmas break, uh, we had a Christmas dinner with a few buddies, and uh, we, we prayed for one another wow. when we needed to yeah. over the holidays. And, and, and this is, and I want to everybody, this is what's going on in college. That's I mean, right. That's, that's right. That, yeah. We always hear the bad side, but this is something good. That's right. And so, you know, it's it's a time. I mean, we really should be praying anyways. But that's right. That's it, it's right. a time that you know of gathering and, and remembrance of what Christ has done. As as I think more as a group. You know, it's it's harder to recognize it as a group. I think that's an awesome thing to bring out about Christmas. Okay, question of the week. You ready for this, Riley? Oh, I hadn't heard this, by the way. This is all new. Y'all ready for this? (laughs) Okay, out of Christmas meal. Now, I want to say this because we're going to learn about all of this. This is going to be deep. Arrangements. I say arrangements. Our eating practices, maybe is the best word, (laughs) are different. Okay? So, So we went and got something to eat. Robbie got a salad with... I don't know, some kind of weird stuff Chicken on it. Walnut. I don't know what it was, yeah, but it, it was like this little bitty tiny thing. So, uh, and I got fried chicken. You got all fried stuff. Fried stuff. Yeah. My whole plate was fried. No joke. So our eating practice is different. But I want to ask you, Rob, what is one of the things about Christmas dinner that you don't like? Don't like? I thought it was going to be the other way around. Okay. No. I do not like sugar cookies. For sugar dessert. cookies, okay. They just fill your mouth with flour. Yeah, that makes sense. I ask you, you the same thing. Yeah, what, yeah. What, what, I, I, what do you not? I don't really know, you know, about, you know, I, I guess everybody would say, which I never have had it much, but fruitcake, you know, those little oh, yeah. things that weigh like 800 pounds, you know, <laughs> um, I, I don't know, I never had that much, but as far as Christmas stuff, sugar cookies, I can't believe you don't like sugar cookies. Sugar cookies, ugh. Man, yeah. Y'all better comment down below if you don't like sugar. Yeah, and tell us what's your what's one of the things well, that you if, like. if you didn't bring if they didn't bring it to Christmas dinner you'd be happy about. That's right. You know, cranberry sauce for Thanksgiving, of course. You know, <laughs> everybody's like, man, some people love cranberry sauce, some yeah. people don't like cranberry sauce. But going back to fruitcake, I mean, even the shape, the ripple shape that you make it in is weird. <laughs> yeah, I agree. The, I agree with you on that. The yeah, whole thing like, is yeah. weird. Oh, yeah, you know, uh, but definitely, I, I promise you one thing: we cooked. I didn't cook, but the men of the church and some other people cooked turkeys for, for our homeless thing that we did. Mm. And, bro, we had turkey Amen. upon turkey. Yes. Upon, yeah. And what what did you serve while you were there? Uh, it was the uh, candied yams and the sweet potatoes. The so, sweet potatoes, yeah. yeah but nobody, nobody wanted that. yams. Listen here. Pastor kept coming by saying, double portion, double yeah, portion. We had so much food. Nobody Thank you, Brother Rick. Yeah. Brother Rick got us so much food. I was there like, Robbie, give them double portion. Give them double portion. And, and Robbie's like, I can't find anybody that wants a yam. Because <laughs> our sweet potato kind of ran out. That's right. So that's we had right. to start giving out yams. But anyways, those people, they loved it. We're excited about that. And, I was telling him the other day about it, just to kind of share about the ministry of the homeless and everything. And, yeah, um, yeah, do that. That's awesome. Yeah, you know, I was telling Pastor the other day, uh, you know, you walk in there and you, you see the stereotype of, you know, what you think. And you're like, oh, they're probably, you know, they're probably not going to say anything. 
they come up there to get the food, and they're they're so thankful. They're more yeah. thankful than I am. We have a normal life. Yeah, you know? that's it's, right. Yeah, they're out in the freezing. You yeah, know? And, and, yeah. And so if if you've never you done one of those, yeah. if you come here and you've never want, done one of those, I encourage you to please try it out. It's it's definitely a humbling experience. You meet a lot of cool people and. It's a great experience. And for our community that doesn't come to Flimmer Road, we definitely want you to try to get involved in some outreaches in the yes, community. Yes. Find, there's there's a ton of outreaches that you can do probably around your town and just get out there and start doing them. I mean, Amen. That's awesome. Well, we're going to be signing out Sign of our out. second podcast. I don't even know what that means, but it sounded cool. So anyways, we thank you for joining. Don't forget to subscribe, and we're definitely going to be able to... Uh, um, uh, continue this forward if you have anything you like for us to talk about please shoot it to us we'd love to be able to do that yes and please and share this video if you're on facebook or youtube or whatever and we'd love to you know get this out to more people and you know it's important conversations to have most but, definitely most definitely have a good day we're going to pray out and uh we're just going to ask the lord's blessings over this and, and we know god's going to help us let's pray the Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for saving us. Lord, we thank you for all that you've done for us. Lord, thank you for these um, ones that have listened. God, help us to uh, uh, be a Christian and stand during this day. And Lord, we'll just continue to praise you and thank you for all that you do. In your name we ask it. Amen. Amen. And amen.